If you're living in the Philippines, you'll find that there are many modes of transportation, from large buses that cross the islands, to V-hires that ply scheduled routes, to taxis, grab cars, trikes, and even motorcycle taxis called hobble hobbles. But there's really nothing like having your own wheels. And for some, that may mean buying a car. A car provides a safety cage around you and your passengers. It's aircon, and you can listen to music while you're driving, but it's gonna take you longer to get from A to B. You'll find yourself in traffic behind other vehicles, watching motorcycles scoot around you. For those a little bit more adventurous, a motorcycle can be a handy commuting vehicle and a great way to see the country. Just take precaution, learn how the locals drive, maybe not replicate their habits, but adjust yourself to them. Hang back instead of speeding forward and keep your head on a swivel. Being out on the road, feeling the wind, being immersed in the landscape is an experience all in itself. The process for buying a bike in the Philippines is fairly straightforward. The tricky part is after you've bought the bike, getting to the point where you can actually ride it. I've owned two bikes here in the Philippines. The first was a manual shift Yamaha Sniper. Really nice bike, rides very well, very comfortable seat, uh, very sporty, pretty quick on the road. And uh, I took that bike on a few trips and really enjoyed owning it. But the problem with that bike was it didn't have any storage. And I didn't want to uh, put saddlebags or a box on the back. It just wouldn't really go well with that bike's look. So that bike was a really great bike for going out on a, on a day trip up in the mountains, enjoying twisty roads. But it wasn't a really practical bike around the city. If you're in traffic a lot, you don't want to be clutching all the time and shifting a manual bike. That gets old after a while. And if you're going to the grocery store or one of the malls across the city, you want a bike that has some storage so you're not having to carry your purchases in your hands on the way home. So I eventually made the decision to sell that bike and buy a more traditional scooter. Now a scooter has underseat storage and it also will have a grocery hook. Plus there's a the room between your feet. You can put a backpack as I did on one of the trips I went on with that bike. So my second bike was a Honda Click and it was a very practical bike. And with that scooter, uh, I actually did some trips. I went to Dumaguete from Cebu and we were able to load up that bike with both of our backpacks, uh, some extra rain gear and shoes underneath the seat and have a fairly comfortable ride down to Dumaguete that's about a five hour ride because it includes a ferry ride of about an hour crossing over to Negros Island. And that's a roll on roll off ferry. Um, it's a nice trip, but it's a little bit grueling on a scooter. Scooters have smaller wheel dimensions, smaller tire dimensions. And this particular scooter, the Honda Click 150i, which was a new model with a larger engine, it performed fine, but it wasn't the most comfortable vehicle to ride five hours on. The seating position is a little bit too upright. If you're my age, maybe your back is gonna hurt a little bit after five hours. And I also took that bike up to Bantayan Island. And I did that with another couple. And my friend, he had a, uh, an older model Honda Click 125. And again, the bikes performed perfectly well. They'll go on these long trips, but the smaller tires are going to absorb every little bump in the road. The scooters are a little bit more rigid. They're really built for around town. You take them out on long trips and it doesn't so much beat up the scooter, it beats you up. But the Honda Click is not a bad bike. It's one of the larger traditional style scooters you'll find here in the Philippines. I, I think I would recommend that bike. But this time around, I have my eye on a new bike that combines a little bit of both. It's got a little bit more sportiness of that sniper and it's got the convenience of the scooter the seating position is kind of halfway between a motorbike where you have your feet down on the pegs and a scooter where you have your feet out in front of you this scooter has floorboards 
that you place your feet on and they're off to the side and it's a wide bike. So your stance and your position of your legs is much closer to a traditional motorcycle riding position. It's still an upright riding position and I appreciate that because I've had a hip replaced twice. So I'm always looking for comfort in a bike. That's a very high priority for me. And I think I found a great bike for that. And this is the bike, it's an Aerox S. The Aerox is a Yamaha bike. It's a 155 cc liquid cooled fuel injected engine. It's got variable valve timing and that gives you a flatter power curve and torque curve. And it also allows the bike to bring on that power at lower RPMs. So I think the bike will perform quite well. It won't outperform most manual shift bikes because a manual gearbox is gonna give you a huge advantage over most of these automatics. But it will give me a comfortable ride, and what I'm out there looking for is scenery, not speed. Now I haven't been able to test drive a bike. You typically can't do that here. You go out and you buy a bike. Maybe you have a friend, you can test drive theirs, or you can find somebody. But it's not a huge investment. These bikes are anywhere from $1,600 for some of these smaller bikes to about $2,500 US dollars. And so you make the investment. If it doesn't work out, bikes have a high resale value here. There's two models of this bike, the basic model and the S model. The S model differs in that it has a start-stop system. When you come to a traffic light, the bike comes to a stop, the engine will turn off and you can enable or disable that. Having the engine shut off obviously saves it from burning more fuel, but it also keeps the engine a little bit cooler. It's not sitting there cooking at idle. The S model also has anti-lock brake up front and it has a convenience feature that I really appreciate and that's keyless ignition. I really like having that on the bike. You just leave your key attached to your belt clip with a carabiner and you just push the button the bike uh, comes to life then you can control it with a knob here on the uh, panel also with the keyless ignition you get push button control for opening the seat and for opening the fuel door and uh, i really like this bike too because you don't have to go under the seat to refuel the bike so you don't even have to get off the bike to refuel it So I just got the bike home from the dealer and what they give you to get it home is this, what they call a conduction plate. And it allows you to bring the bike only to your place of residence from the dealership. If you're caught out riding the bike anywhere else or on any day other than the day you purchase the bike, uh, the bike will be impounded. With your bike, you'll get an official receipt. You'll also get an owner's manual and a warranty book. The warranty book has pages in it that uh, you can use to redeem uh, free maintenance for the first few maintenance uh, appointments. You'll pay for any parts or oil, for example, and they give you the labor for free on that. Also, uh, a little while later, it could be six weeks to three months, you'll get your registration. And then you'll get uh, with it a paper version of your registered uh, plate. Take that and your registration and some of this down to one of the local malls. And here in Cebu, SM City has a kiosk. So does Elizabeth Mall, E-Mall, and also J Center Mall. They have, all have kiosks where they will print for you one of these. That is your temporary plate showing that your bike is registered. Uh, I say temporary plate because you get that printed yourself for about 350 pesos, including a couple of these. Don't forget those. Won't be able to put your plate on your bike. And uh, then you will get an official plate, but it may take a year or two and that'll go to your dealer. I've never owned a bike long enough to get my official plate. Anyway, you take this plate and your two little trusty bolts, grab your keys, put them on your bike, and you're ready to ride. Make sure you have a license.